What if you only ate meat for 30 days? Would you gain muscle and burn a lot of fat by avoiding carbohydrates and processed foods? Or would you suffer from nutrition deficiencies? Restricting yourself to only eating meat does sound extreme, yet it's exactly what a diet plan that continues to grow in popularity known as the carnivore diet recommends that you do for better health, better body composition, and more energy. While the idea may seem radical, it's gained quite a large following over the last few years, including from some well-known individuals like Jordan Peterson, who claims that it can provide various health benefits. But what does the science actually say about what happens to your body if you only eat meat? Well, first there are some immediate physiological changes that you'll experience. This is because when you switch to a meat-only diet, your body will undergo a significant metabolic shift. Carbohydrates found in foods like fruits, vegetables, and grains are the body's default source of energy that gets broken down and stored in the form of glucose and glycogen. When you eliminate carbs and in turn glucose from your diet, your body has to look for alternative fuel sources. That's where ketosis comes into play. Ketosis is a metabolic state in which your body burns fat and ketones for energy instead of carbohydrates. Ketones and keto acids are alternative fuel sources for your body that are made when glucose is in short supply. They're produced in the liver from the breakdown of fats when there's not enough sugar or glucose to supply the body's fuel needs. Within a few days of starting a meat-only diet, you'll likely enter ketosis, but this can take up to two weeks. Ketosis is linked to benefits like making it easier to lose weight. For example, research shows that you'll feel less hungry and more full when in ketosis. The high protein and high fat content of meat is also associated with appetite suppression and feeling more satiated, which is why a carnivore diet often leads to weight loss automatically without having to count calories. Also, since the carnivore diet is so highly restrictive, it automatically eliminates many high-calorie foods like grains, sugars, and processed snacks. This reduction in caloric intake is very likely to lead to fat loss on its own. Another reason why you're likely to lose a substantial amount of body fat over the course of 30 days is that protein has a higher thermic effect of food compared to carbohydrates and fats, meaning it requires more energy to digest. This can potentially increase metabolism, helping with weight and fat loss. You might also have an easier time building muscle, especially if you're currently eating very little meat or no meat at all. That's because research links eating meat to building more muscle. For example, we have a study that found that in older men, combining resistance training with a diet that included meat led to greater increases in muscle growth compared to lifting weights without eating meat. Of course, this was based on older men, and more importantly, many people don't get enough protein per day as it is, so just by raising the amount of protein you take in per day will help you build more muscle if you're currently not taking in enough. Meat itself is likely not any more special of a protein source for gaining muscle than things like chicken, fish, or eggs, but it is likely better at building muscle than vegan protein sources like tofu, beans, and seitan. For example, in another study, scientists concluded that a vegetarian diet is associated with a lower muscle mass index than an omnivorous diet even at the same protein intake level. Another benefit you could experience as the days go by is relief from food sensitivities or allergies if you happen to be allergic or sensitive to certain foods. It's believed that plants have developed defense mechanisms over thousands of years to prevent them from being eaten so they can grow undisturbed. For example, lectins are proteins found in various plant foods like beans, legumes, and certain grains, and some people believe they can cause digestive discomfort and inflammation. By excluding all plant-based foods containing lectins, the carnivore diet potentially provides relief to individuals who have these sensitivities. Also, eating a meat-based diet eliminates potential allergens like gluten, commonly found in wheat, barley, and rye, which can also cause digestive upset and other negative symptoms like fatigue and headaches. Moving beyond gluten and lectins, some people have allergies or sensitivities to specific plant compounds or proteins. For example, people with allergies to nuts, soy, or certain fruits and vegetables may find that eating a meat-only diet reduces the risk of allergic reactions or discomfort. Another thing that can happen as you transition to a meat-only diet is you'll likely experience enhanced mental clarity while in ketosis. That's why a lot of people that try the carnivore diet like it. After they get into ketosis, brain fog subsides and they experience better cognitive performance. Now, one benefit that everyone will experience relates to the simplicity of this kind of diet. Many plans are hard to stick to because they require constant calorie counting, a lot of meal prepping, portion control, and overall planning. If you only eat meat, even if you also eat organ meats as well, you still have very limited food choices, simplifying meal planning and grocery shopping. There's no need for complex recipes. You would just grill, roast, or pan fry the meat. And many people on Carnivore recommend you don't even add seasonings to ensure you get the full benefit 
of not triggering plant-based allergies. Also, you eat meat until you're full, so there's no calorie counting or concerns about portions. Now, even though there are benefits, you should know that there could be a fair share of drawbacks. Entering ketosis, for example, can trigger a set of symptoms collectively known as the keto flu. These symptoms include fatigue, headaches, irritability, a lack of motivation, dizziness, sugar cravings, nausea, bad breath, and muscle cramps. It's your body's way of signaling that it's adjusting to a new fuel source, and these symptoms can last anywhere from a few days up to a week and a half. So if you're planning to go all in on meat, brace yourself for this initial uncomfortable hurdle. Another immediate concern during the first week of adjusting to this plan is the drastic reduction in fiber intake. Meat doesn't contain fiber, a nutrient that's very helpful for healthy digestion. Fiber adds bulk to your stool and aids in its passage through the digestive system. That's why a lack of fiber can lead to constipation. Constipation is actually a very common complaint among those who try the carnivore diet. On the other hand, some people also report experiencing diarrhea, which could be due to a drastic change in gut flora or the very high fat content of this diet. So within the first week of eating only meat, you're likely to experience a range of symptoms as your body adjusts to ketosis, adjusts to a much higher fat diet, and grapples with a lack of dietary fiber. It's a period of adaptation, and how smoothly you transition depends on factors like your previous diet, your metabolic flexibility, your overall health, and your genetic makeup. As you progress into the second week of your meat-only diet, your body will likely have adapted to ketosis and the symptoms of the keto flu will likely start subsiding or will be fully subsided. But that doesn't mean you're in the clear. One of the most significant concerns that arise when you stay on a meat-only diet is the potential for nutrient deficiencies over time. Meat, while rich in protein and certain essential vitamins like B12, is not a complete source of all the nutrients your body needs. For example, you'll be missing out on essential nutrients like vitamin E, which are abundant in vegetables like collard greens and spinach, as well as nuts and seeds. Another one is vitamin C, which is crucial for your immune system as well as the synthesis of collagen, a protein that helps wounds heal and maintains the health of your skin, blood vessels, and bones. While scurvy is rare in modern times, it can become a real concern if you don't eat foods with vitamin C, which is predominantly found in plant-based foods. The nice thing is that when you don't eat carbohydrates, your body actually becomes more efficient at absorbing vitamin C. Including organ meats can further help, but it can still be difficult to get enough vitamin C. Another nutrient you'll be lacking is calcium, primarily found in dairy products as well as certain vegetables. Calcium is essential for bone health and a deficiency can lead to weakened bones and teeth. While meat does contain some calcium, it's not enough to meet the daily recommended intake. A good way to get around this problem is to make bone broth from the leftover bones as that provides calcium and collagen while still sticking primarily to a meat-based diet. Next is the issue of cholesterol, and cholesterol is often demonized when in reality it's necessary for synthesizing hormones like testosterone, and consuming foods with cholesterol can actually be beneficial for your body. But that doesn't change the fact that meat, and especially red and processed meats, are high in saturated fats which can raise your levels of LDL cholesterol, commonly known as the bad cholesterol. For example, as stated by a research review article from Harvard, LDL cholesterol is significantly higher after consuming red and white meat diets compared to a non-meat diet, and elevated LDL levels are associated with an increased risk of heart disease. With that said, some newer studies suggest that dietary cholesterol may not have as significant of an impact on blood cholesterol levels as previously thought. But still, if you already have high cholesterol or are at risk for heart disease, a meat-only diet might make these issues worse. On the other hand, if it helps you lose weight and body fat, it can make cholesterol and blood pressure issues much better. That's why it's especially important to do regular health checkups when on a carnivore diet. On top of that, the absence of carbohydrates in your diet could lead to decreased athletic performance, especially during the initial days or weeks that you're adapting to this new plan. That's because, like I already said, carbs are your body's preferred source of quick energy, especially during high-intensity activities. Sure, your body will adapt to using fat for fuel, and once you've gone through the adaptation phase, your athletic performance may bounce back to the same level that you were at when you were consuming carbohydrates. But it's important to realize that during the initial phase and even afterwards, you may see a decrease in performance and energy levels. In some cases, your mental health might take a hit too. This is because carbohydrates, although often vilified, they actually help in the production of serotonin, a neurotransmitter that regulates mood, sleep, and appetite. 
A lack of carbs could lead to a decrease in serotonin levels, potentially causing mood swings, irritability, and even symptoms of depression. While protein contains some amino acids that are precursors to neurotransmitters, the absence of carbs could negate these benefits. Another concern is the financial burden that a meat-only diet might have. Meat is generally more expensive than fruits, vegetables, and grains. That's why consuming meat for every meal will likely raise your grocery bill. The nice thing is, if you're currently spending tons of money on junk food and you follow a standard American type of diet, you may actually balance out your grocery bill and potentially even save some money. But if you're buying quality cuts of meat that are pasture-raised and grass-fed, which they should be because that'll increase nutrient density, but unfortunately, that'll also increase your grocery bill. In general, to sum it all up, during the first week of a carnivore diet, also known as the adaptation phase, you may encounter digestive adjustments, including diarrhea, constipation, and increased thirst as your gut adapts to the absence of dietary fiber from plant-based foods. By the end of the first week, your digestive system may start acclimating to this diet, potentially reducing gastrointestinal symptoms and increasing energy levels. It can take anywhere from a few days up until the second week for you to enter ketosis, using fat as your primary energy source, resulting in improved mental clarity, appetite reduction, and potential weight loss. Week three could bring further adaptations with some people experiencing better digestion, but as time goes on, there is a potential for nutrient deficiencies due to the absence of plant-based foods. After 30 days of eating only meat, you might experience some short-term benefits like weight loss, reduced inflammation, and increased energy levels. However, the long-term risks might outweigh these gains. So that about wraps it up. I hope at this point you understand much more about the pros and cons of a meat-only diet. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want any extra help creating a more balanced meal plan based on your preferences, check out my free six-week transformation program. You'll get a personalized meal plan, a recipe book, a 42-day workout plan, and a coach. To learn more, you just need to click the link in the description, or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.